for me, I can say that six months ago when, when Anne started collecting the plastic lids and sorting them, I was excited and I felt that by working with the plastic, we could become expert enough to lead other people in discussions about the amount of plastic we have in the environment and how it's single use and how else it can be used and where it goes when it when it leaves our garbage our garbage bags but ultimately i have to say the more i touch these, these pieces of plastic and the more i i uh, organized and worked with them i began to become incredibly aware of how much plastic I touched in a day in my life and then I looked back at the plywood which has you know it's not a natural product anymore really and then I looked at the glue we were using and then I looked back at the lids again and I began to look around my house and see what I had in my house that I had taken for granted were things that I had to buy um, and it has changed my uh, perception of what's important in a product. Is it the packaging or is it the actual product that I'm buying? And how can I change, um, change the producers? How can I use my voice and my art to change how producers um, produce plastic for, for public consumption? I think an outcome for me just picking up on what Nancy said also is the incredible um, amount of uh, small plastic micro shavings and little bits that resulted just from moving all these lids around and, and the awareness that um, plastic even if we begin removing these bigger objects, um, these things are breaking down into extremely fine, fine particles. So as an artist, I know you have um, materials and these materials have properties such as stick stickability and I thought it would be pretty easy to find one glue that could glue plastic lids to a surface such as plywood or a thin sheet of um, plastic Tyvek, things like that. And un unfortunately, many, many dollars later and having tried at least uh, eight different methods of attaching plastic. The only one that was tried and true that I could say this is definitely attached was to drill a hole in the plastic lid and pound a nail in. The glues by and large, once they were um, dried, somehow the lids would pull away from the glue, even leaving the markings on the top of the lid in the glue. So what were the final um, products that you ended up using? I ended up using uh, plywood and covered it with a, an outdoor uh, sealant, uh, white paint that's used outdoors, uh, and then bought some exterior caulking that's usually used for windows and doorways uh, that could withstand weather. And we attached them one by one one by one each each lid uh, in that method. And even that required some practice because Anne and I had two different ways of attaching it. And my way in the end would been, was not as success, successful uh, and was more time consuming. So we ended up using Anne's method. Additionally, we also used a glue gun, and the glue gun seemed to um, help secure um, 
lids that could be attached together. We also discovered that it was easier to attach the lids when the broadest side of the lid was down rather than putting it on its edge. We started out by being very careful in the way that we tried to create the design and even trying to draw things and then I, not being a mosaic artist, was very frustrated because I just couldn't get the feel of it. So I ended up starting throwing the lids in a line and that helped start to determine the form of it. Um, I think the other thing is that we learned is that with lids they take up a big um, area so to make one flower for example was four square inches so our overall design which we had envisioned being much more encompassing many more elements got reduced down and that was a learning curve in itself in terms of the design of it The boys came to work on their mosaics over the summer period after making their own designs and deciding themselves what they wanted to build. Here we see Colin Forsyth building the lost calico cat. He had a clear idea in his mind of how he wanted to arrange the lids and all I had to do was show him how to glue them. Then the boys painted some backgrounds until they had their finished products. It was a wonderful experience working with them. Here we see Xavier Bennett. Both boys, by the way, are nine years old from the Ecole uh, de KDM Pomquette. And Xavier also had a very clear idea in his mind of what he wanted to build, the super duper rainbow. And we had so much fun learning how to apply the glues. Um, Xavier's mother was here, as was Collins. And we worked in my garage, which became a mosaic building studio over the summer. And it was a wonderful experience. These boys collected the most lids of any elementary students in the county. Seniors were major contributors to the Plastic Lid Project and a lot of our lids did come from the senior community so two seniors were chosen to build their mosaic and they chose a rainbow to represent the diversity of the whole community and everybody who is involved in this project and um, as you can see it, theirs turned out to be wonderful as well. Children of all ages enjoyed experimenting and arranging the lids in different designs, but even preschoolers pointed out the need for these to be recycled. Everyone was encouraged to think about the impact of these plastic lids on our environment, especially the oceans. This sea turtle was made by elementary and high school students. Sessions were held at the Art House and the Anaganish People's Place Library for different members of the community to discuss the environmental implications of plastic lids.
little tour around the Mosaic Studio on August the 16th. These are the lids that are ready to take out the backing cap to make a Mickey Mouse star by the youth there.